Now it's time for I Challenge You 5Ds, the show that goes to show that sometimes it's not such a bad thing to give your opponent control. Slime, we love to see it. Oh, they sent the Metal Reflect Slime, let's go! Oh, those AI decision-making skills. Grab a Synchro and jump on your Dual Runner because it's time to open packs, build decks with our pulls, and send our bots into all new forms of mechanized melee. We're hitting the road running this season with wild new blessings, even tougher challenges, and a ban list made to hit the gas on this format. So without further ado, let's rev it up. And welcome back. Kings, queens, and monarchs of every element to I challenge you, Yu-Gi-Oh! Last week was a weird week. This week is a hype one. We're opening two of the best sets from 5Ds, The Duelist Revolution and Star Strike Blast. I have a special place in my heart for these ones. Uh, thanks to Wave Motion Yu-Gi-Oh!, where I got to play with one of the most based decks I have ever played in my life. And I think, I think Borgerbot may be able to play that deck too. But before we can get to the pack opening or the deck building, we have to get to the blessings and then the calamities. <laughs> Starting with the blessings. This is getting to be a smaller and smaller wheel and that's because I don't want to see doubles ever again. So there are some sick things on this list. I can't wait for any of these. Let's spin a wheel. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, Oh, this is an interesting blessing. This is traditional format. Traditional format is exactly what it sounds like on the tin. Every banned card we get to play one of, as long as it's in our collection. But this doesn't apply to the ban list at the time. This applies to the I Challenge You ban list. So all of our banned cards are back at one. There are a lot of cool things we can do with this one. But before we can see what we can do... Let's see what we have to, because it's time for the calamities. Let's spin the wheel to see what calamity will befall us today. We are getting flavor of the week. Okay, this is really cool. I will take flavor of the week. This continues to be probably my favorite calamity ever. Flavor of the week, for those of you who don't remember, is a calamity where I have to play in all of my decks at least three cards that I pulled this week, including one card that I have to play three of. So I'm going to be excited. Let's see if we can get that lock cat, shall we? We're going to begin this week with one of the most impactful sets in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history, Duelist Revolution. A lot of the cards that you can get out of Duelist Revolution that are very exciting, I don't actually particularly want. Scrap Dragon is unusable in I Challenge You. Uh, Bot of Duality doesn't do much. Solemn Morning is terrifying to have in a bot deck with the click yes turbo attitude, but some of the less well-loved cards, like the Beast Synchros, are very exciting for this set. Let's see what we can get. Pack number one, Duelist Revolution. Uh, Landoice's Luminous Moss is the rare. I remember some of the Naturia support spell cards being, like, okay and limited. Uh, if you control a Naturia monster, the opponent's effect monsters cannot activate their effects this turn. Okay, that's not great. But Summon Curse is potentially great. Gotta banish a card from your hand every time you special summon a monster. Desperate Tag is also an interesting one, especially if we pull the Amazonis monsters. Pretty solid stuff. There is a parallel selection. I think I read this card and every time I forget what it does because it's bad. When a Synchro monster you control is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, select one of your remove from play spell cards and add it to your hand. What is even the context in which you would use this? The Watt monsters are also something to think about. They have attack directly effects and some cool things they can do during the damage step. Uh, Watt Pheasant is basically Farfa, but really, really bad. There's a DD Destroyer. This is a fun build around. It's a level four warrior, and when it's banished, you can destroy a card in your opponent's side of the field. 
Kind of sick. Oh, Pestilence is really good for I Challenge You. You equip it to a Beast Warrior, Warrior, or Spellcaster monster. Its attack becomes zero, and during each of your standby phases, it deals 500 in burn damage. Because it has such specific requirements to be equipped, we can play around that with the bot. There's Ambitious Gopher. I have no idea what the bot will do with this, but I kind of want to find out. Egotistical Ape. This card is unusable. Flamvel Poon, though? Not bad. This is a good Flamvel card, and if we can get enough Flamvels into rotation, I think that we can get some good stuff out of that. Blind Spot Strike is great when there's a human playing behind it, but I don't think the AI will ever figure it out. Oh! <laughs> Man, if this were a box of the Duelist Revolution back in the day, this would be the most incredible thing ever done. As is, Pot of Duality is okay. Pot of Duality is fine. Uh, Fabled Raven would have been unplayable, but Pot of Duality is okay. More importantly, that's our first copy of Lock Cat. Lock Cat, Key Mouse, and Chain Dog collectively make up a really, really cool resource loop. I'd love to see three copies of this card. Oh, Reanimation Wave is also weirdly like a decent Call of the Haunted style card in this format. There's Chivalry. You know what? I'll take it. Activate only during the battle phase when the effect of an opponent's effect monster is activated. Negate the activation and destroy that card. Great for battle recruiters. Monoceros. This card just looks like a horse wearing half of a rhino as pants. It's gonna haunt me. It's also got like a weirdly post-apocalyptic background to it. This card is deeply unsettling. Oh, Cursed Armaments is cool. Cursed Armaments can target either player's monster. Cursed Armaments is terrible. There's another DD Destroyer. Again, this is a pretty cool build around. This is the first of the real Amazonas' cards we've seen. Amazonas Fighting Spirit is actually bad. Okay, Amazonas will not work out because Fighting Spirit requires you to be attacking for them to gain a thousand attack. That is unfortunate, but hey, that's a lock cat. Hey, there's a Horn of the Phantom Beast. That's a hell of a rare. And Elephon. Yo, okay. Now we're talking. That is a whole Scrap Archfiend. Scrap Archfiend is a very powerful synchro, and I challenge you just by merit of the fact that it's got 2,700 attack points. You can also synchro into this off of Chimera. So if I pull a Chimera, we could play some Scraps. Oh, that's a second Scrap Archfiend. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Amazon is Sage is also pretty cool. If we're on a warrior-based strategy, this card becomes a basically just an MST. And it has to target guards your opponent controls, so Borgerbot can't mess it up. Probably. All right, we're about halfway through. I'm not sure what we're missing. Again, I would like to be able to see three Lock Cat, three uh, Chain Dog today. We're going to get Chain Dog out of Star Strike Blast if we get it at all, and I'd like to see some of those big beast synchros. I think that could be cool. I'm remembering now that the beast deck requires solidarity, so that might not work out so well. But we do have that resource loop in rotation, so I'll take it. Here's another Ambitious Gopher. Is Ambitious Gopher... Oh, it's a fiend. Why is it called Gopher? It's spelled differently from the animal, I think. I, I know that it's from Gradius. I have no idea why it's called that. Miracle Synchro Fusion is a really cool one. If we get to a Dragonite Draco Aquist, this card can be really, really solid. It's a great build around. If we can get to Ultimate Axon Kicker, it gets even better. Hey, there's a Voltic Bicorn. That's a level 7 Synchro. Requires a Beast-type tuner and a one or more non-tuner monsters. That can be a level 3 Beast-type tuner plus a level 4. That's pretty good. If it's destroyed by your opponent's card, either by battle or card effect, both players mill 7 cards. More importantly, it's just a 2500 guy and is a Beast-type Synchro for some Beast-type shenanigans. Yo, and there's Thunder Unicorn. All right, we have two of the Thunder... Uh, the, the, the unicorn guys, the electro, the electro horsies. <laughs> oh, 
what do we even do with this one? Naturia Pumpkin at Secret Rare. Uh, all other face up monsters you control become plant monsters once per turn during your standby phase. If you do not control a face up Naturia Pineapple, have no monsters in your graveyard except plants or beasts. You can special summon it from your graveyard. Uh, you also have to have no spell or traps to activate and resolve this effect. I don't know how useful this card is, but it's very funny and people thought it was going to be very good when it came out. Did I say pumpkin to pineapple? Whatever. Hey, Scrap Golem, the Scrap Monarch, as they say. Uh, they, they really just call it a brick. Mm, not much. We've got two packs left. Uh, I am, again, I'm really hoping for one of our Synchro Fusions. I would love to see one of those for us to be able to Miracle Synchro Fusion into. Reanimation wave, sure. And finally, out of Duelist Revolution... Wiseman's Chalice. This is a bizarre card. If you control no monsters, select one monster in your opponent's graveyard, special summon it, and during the end phase, you give it back to your opponent's monster, or to your opponent. It is a weird one. This will probably be much better in the Xyz era. All right, Duelist Revolution was odd for sure, but it did contain a lot of the cool things we were looking for. Let me see how many lock cats we got. That's really going to determine the direction of the beast deck. Okay, we got two lock cats. That's not bad. I would have preferred to see three, but uh, you know, uh, beggars can't be choosers. We now have really good things to do with rescue cat, by the way. All right, on to Star Strike Blast. This is going to be a really odd set. I don't know what the cards in the set actually do in the I Challenge You format. I'm looking forward to finding out. Oh, I know what that one does. Glow Up Bulb. One of the most incredible tuner monsters ever produced. I do know that Borgerbot is going to immediately use this card anytime it is in the graveyard, but that's kind of fine. It's just a free guy. I will happily take that over anything else that Borgerbot can use at any time. Also, the Karakuris are in here. If you've watched Chaos Draft, you know that that may be a problem for me. There's the real Naturia Pumpkin. This card is an interesting build around when this card is normal summoned while your opponent controls a monster. You can special summon a Naturia monster from your hand. A lot of the Naturias require you to have another guy on the field so it can be pretty good uh stag beetle also solid there's a watt castle this is an interesting build around watt castle says any monster that attacks a watt monster loses a thousand attack after damage calculation i don't remember if dragonfly is in this pack or the last one i haven't been counting when it comes to that but i can certainly see this being a build around in that uh borgerbot is really terrible at dealing with uh with attack reduction stats and so i think watt castle could be interesting if we get three of it hey there's the dragonfly itself Scrap Mind Reader at Secret Rare. Huh. A uh, mm, couple cool things. We've got a Karakuri Strategist here. That's pretty sick. Half Counter, I think, is a pretty good battle trick during damage calculation. If a monster you control is being attacked, target that monster you control. That target gains attack equal to half the original attack of the attacking monster until the end of this turn. Basically honest in a trap card. We dig it. <laughs> Oh, I continue to be eternally trolled by the pack opener getting red dragon archfiend support while possessing no red dragon archfiends. But hey, that's a Watt Castle and that's better than anything else that we had. Red Nova Dragon is sick, though. If we could build a deck around it, I would. Hey, there's a third Watt Castle. Okay, we are now on three Watt Castles. Interestingly, we are eight packs in and we are not on three Dragonfly. Bizarre. But you do have to remember, we do have three Shining Angel. And Shining Angel is pretty solid for this. <laughs> lube hey there's a chain dog we love to see it can't be used as synchro material except for the synchro summon of a beast if this card is in your graveyard you can special summon this card and if you do banish it when it leaves the field you must control exactly two beast type monsters in order to activate and resolve this effect kind of a cool one. Oh, and there's vanity's emptiness excellent no why why do you do this to me what did I do to deserve this torture? Oh, God. Oh, red Nova Dragon with no Red Dragon Archfiend. No Vise, correct. There's another Vanity's Emptiness. Oh, boy. We're about halfway through the packs and nothing 
really sticking out to me, except for the Watts. I do think Naturias are going to be something to look out for in this pack. Ooh, okay, that's kind of a cool one. Karakuri Ninja Sawzank. This card is kind of a man-eater bug. If we're going to be setting monsters face down, um, then this card would be pretty good. I'm not sure if this is going to work with our pool, but I think it could be pretty sick. Also, that's a third Watt Dragonfly. We love to see it. Oh, I hadn't even been thinking about Formula Synchron. This is our first Formula Synchron. Pretty good in a world where we have Glow Up Bulb. Ally of Justice Thousand Arms, by the way, is a hilarious card against light decks. That's a Dragoonity Knight Vajrayana. Huh. I do actually know that the bot is surprisingly good at using this card. Uh, so this is a very easy way for us to ladder into level 8 synchros. And I think that's probably worth it if we can get a phalanx and enough duxes. Mm, that's one swift scarecrow. I love how its name is Swift Scarecrow, and it is swift because it just has a rocket strapped to its ass. For reasons, I don't know why I'm trying to why I'm trying to find a rationale behind this. I lived in the country. I know what you do when you're bored. <laughs> Tuning's okay. Tuning is pretty good. If we ever get structural support and get the opportunity to get some junk synchrons, this card's gonna go wild. Oh, and that was our third half counter too. <gasps> Hold up. One spellcaster type synchro monster. I don't think we have one of those. Plus a spellcaster type monster. We do have those. We have explosive magician. Yo. Oh. Ooh. A red screen is kind of sick. It stops your opponent from attacking, period, but you pay a thousand life points during your end phase. Again, red dragon archfiend support haunting me. Last pack of Star Strike Blast. A second black back and formula synchron. This has been a weird one, folks. This has been a very strange one. How many Watt Hoppers did I get? Oh, hell yeah, I got three Watt Hoppers. That's probably something. Are we making Watts today? Let's find out. Our first challenger is Reptilian uh, Re Reptiliang Zing. I find that oddly hard to say by Lyran. This is a deck that does exactly what you would expect it to do. Most of the Yang Zing monsters either have a zero defense or a zero attack, giving them a very strong capability to synergize with the Reptilian monsters, namely Reptilian Vasky, who contribute off two zero attack point monsters on the field to summon herself from the hand. Reptilian Nog is a notoriously obnoxious card, and the more modern reptilians add a little bit of utility to the deck. The main problem for Borgerbot is going to be the fact that the Yang Zings float eternally, and so we are going to be doing something a little bit silly today. The thing I love the most about widespread dud and traditional format is it allows me to play some decks I never would otherwise. Meet what's up? Uh, this is... <laughs> This is a terrible deck, folks, but it includes a bajillion insane DM cards, and so it can probably carry us over. Our win condition simply must be Watt Monsters. Our main win condition is Watt Pheasant, who is a direct attacker and can help us with Watt Castle, a card that makes our opponent's attack points go down by a thousand every time they attack a Watt Monster. Our Watt Monsters are capable of doing some pretty silly things, but most most importantly, we have the hopper lock online. We can just do hopper. Hopper's just there. So we can summon hopper and hopefully our Watt Pheasant can get onto the field and do some damage. One really fun thing in this deck is Makiu the Magical Mist, which is basically an additional two copies of our Raigeki if they have Yang Zing monsters with zero defense or Reptilians on the board. And then finally, Soul of Purity and Light is our closer. Make no mistake, this is a bad deck but I cannot wait to run it. I asked my chat about the outcome of this duel. Deceptively, it says 100% said, what's good? Because 80 points went to what did we do wrong? And that person who submitted 80 points is probably in, a in pretty good shape for this. I don't know how what's good wins this, but uh, Austin CK at least has a lot of faith in it. Let's get to dueling let the games begin 
All right, starting off with the dub in rock, paper, scissors. Where is this going to take us? Borgerbot is going to be going first. We open with the one for one discard Dragonfly. Next, we normal summon Shining Angel, and Watt Hopper is definitely a problem, but there's Gozen Match. Gozen Match is the premier floodgate for this deck. The Sawani is going to attack over Shining Angel. Shining Angel will summon the Watt Squirrel. Okay, so we have a Watt Squirrel and we have a Watt Hopper. What's this going to do? Monster Reborn, bring back the Shining Angel. Normal Summon, Watt Woodpecker, go to Battle Phase, do nada. Let's see what they're going to do with the rest of this. The good thing about this field is they are probably going to attack into the Shining Angel. Shining Angel is going to summon the second Hopper. Let's go! They can no longer attack. Now we just have to find a win condition. We're going to Normal Summon the win condition. There's the win. No, the widespread ruin. Oh, we are ruined. Okay, that's okay. Makiyu the Magical Mist saw this field they can't attack us but if we can hit makiyu then we can attack them it's not going to help us out much they're going to go to main phase they're going to go to battle phase they're going to pass let's see if we can draw into the pheasant before we go to deck out where they're going to pass we're going to activate the second goes and match they're going to go to main phase one there's a reptilian card it's going to search out the field spell again. The field spell is going to activate over the field spell. Our Watt Squirrel has zero attack. That's not great. I just realized that Reptilian Vasky is a thing. Vasky is going to really mess up us up. There's the Recycling Batteries, though. Recycling Batteries adds the win condition. Will we summon the Pheasant? No, no, don't do that. Don't one for one for that. No, wait. Hold up. Um. Uh. Well, we do. We do be having a Hopper Lock. That's for sure. A hopper lock do be occurring here. Uh, this is literally going to go to deck, uh, deck out if they don't Vasky us to death. We're going to set a back row. Let's see what they get. Draw for turn. Battle phase. Nothing. End phase. They discarded the Vasky. Could they? Oh, because they have a fire monster on the board. Wait a second. This does go to deck out. Their Vasky can't sack off our monsters as long as they have Swanee on the board. We'll go to end phase. We'll pass the turn. We pass uh, to them. They pass to us. The one hope that we have left is Raigeki. Raigeki does at least get us somewhere. Here's the terraforming. Terraforming is not good for us because we have the hopper lock live. We're going to pass the turn. We're going to go to the end phase. They're going to draw for turn. We're going to go to battle phase. We're going to go to end phase. They're going to discard a monster. We are going to draw. We're going to Raigeki. Okay, we can now deal a thousand damage. The Swanee's going to activate. We cannot deal a thousand damage. I forgot that they could just summon a dude with a massive amount of defense. We need to see if they can find a way to clear our board. They're going to be discarding cards the other thing we need is for them to keep activating oh no they have like 10 pot of avarice cards in their deck we need them to start searching that's the thing we really need to do right now we need them to search four times they can search the deck four times surely they can search the deck four times there goes blackout blackout deals with one of our goes and matches but it also gets one of their cards out of the way maki the magical mist is great that takes out swanee swanee summons a chiwen from the deck and suddenly we are almost on card parity we're going to go for the watt castle and we're going to pass turn with the watt pecker in attack now the watt pecker can attack chiwen twice this is kind of cute because this means that we are going to get one of their monsters out of the deck and we're going to be able to take the card count just down a little bit further if the card count can get one card down one more card down and the card count is suddenly in our favor we draw for turn the watt woodbecker goes to defense position they're going to draw for turn they're going to set a back row we are going to also draw for turn we're going to do nada we're going to discard a card okay we need to keep them um, getting cards out of their deck because somewhere in here is a pot of greed and pot of greed does not help us there's the maki of the magical mist there that's going to get dark bribed no that's the worst possible card for us in this situation hold up a second Yang Zing Prana, that switches all our monsters to attack position. What does that actually do? Destroys everything? What? What is this? I have never read that card in my life. There's a Coral Dragon. Suddenly the game is flipped on its head. Suddenly we need those cards we have. Delinquent Duo is going to take two out of their hand. That's not great. We're going to set a monster. Is that the Watt Dragonfly? We're going to pass the turn. Coral Dragon is going to destroy the monster. It is the Watt Pheasant. They're going to attack in with the Reptilian. What the hell is this card? Nyami. And we are down to a thousand life points left. We really need to find a solution. There's Soul of Purity and Light. There's Watt Woodpecker. 
What Woodpecker is not going to do us a lot of good because they have that Coral Dragon on the board. They can just attack into it. So we really need them to not summon a second monster. We really need them to not summon a second monster. There's the Nyami. Oh no, Coral Dragon going to destroy the Watt Woodpecker. That's actually kind of good for us. There's the second monster we were hoping they didn't have. Let's see what they do with this. They're just going to go to battle phase. They're going to lose some attack points, but goes to the end of the game. What the hell was that game? That was a wild game. Let's see what they can do in game two. Surely this time the Watts will do something. That's definitely a thing Watts can do. You know, something. There's the Shining Angel Watt Castle. This is, to be fair, the premier combination in this deck. Okay, what the hell does Yangzing uh, Prana do? Uh, his card gains the following number of effects based on the number of Yang Zing monsters you have in your graveyard. Oh, it wa really can destroy all cards on the field. There's our Watt Woodpecker. Watt Woodpecker is actually kind of cool because it can attack twice here. It can attack over the, uh, the Pulau. No, it's not going to do that. The Watt Woodpecker is going to get, uh, kind of owned by the, uh, the Beon here. We do have Double Shining Angel. Now, Double Shining Angel can get us into double, uh, into double Watt Dragonfly. Watt Dragonfly being very good under Watt Castle. They're going to send away the uh, Denglong, and they're going to shuffle back for Yangzing Path. There's the Yazi. They're going to summon out a Plow, the, or the, the, the Bishi. Bishi is going to destroy the Watt Woodpecker. That isn't good because Watt Woodpecker is our main source of Watt Castle material. There's Shining Angel for Watt Hopper. There's Shining Angel for... A dragonfly. Dragonfly is okay. As long as the wall hopper is in defense position, they're going to be going for the dragonfly first. They've got Yangs in creation. That's perfectly fine. There's the snatch deal. We're going to take the Swanee. Swanee is not the ideal take here because they can use the Yazi again. We do have Hopper Lock here. Hopper Lock is not ideal because Hopper Lock does just get them gaining life points for forever. Yazi is going to destroy the snatch deal. They're going to switch everything to attack position on our side of the field. There goes the Pot of Avarice. They're going to shuffle back the Yazi. They're going to draw for two. There's a Reptilian Vasky. Reptilian Vasky is very powerful because it can destroy two cards or it can destroy a card on the field. Hopefully they're going to do that. Oh, they do that during the end phase? No, they can do it at any time during the turn. But there's the Watt Dragonfly. Watt Dragonfly gets Watt Hopper. Watt Hopper is now in defense position. That's not ideal, but that does take the Vasky down to 1600. 1600 is a very beatable number. Let's see what we draw for turn. We're going to draw and... There's a Watt Pheasant. Watt Pheasant is kind of cool. It deals a thousand. Let's see it not hit the, the Vasky. That's good. The Vasky does not get to do its thing, but it does get to destroy the Watt Pheasant. Watt Pheasant getting destroyed here is very much bad. They're going to synchro into Coral Dragon, and that's the end of the game. They can summon a bunch of monsters, attack, and I should have been ready for this situation and i was not oh well i had to try it it was very funny uh lots of points for one of our channel members is this list any more likely to get us across the finish line probably not i might be throwing away our chances today with this one but i do want to continue trying silly stuff that's enabled by the fact that we're allowed to run banned cards this week uh and so i am running psychics we're running psychics end of anubis is a fun thing we can bring in because it can negate the effects of the yang zing monsters the psychics have a really cool thing in psi station which when a psychic type monster is normal summoned you can pay 500 and increase its level by one and its attack by 300 these monsters can get big very very quickly and so i want to see if we can make use of that if we can get some big psychic snails of 2200 a final psychic ogre with 25 a psychic emperor with 27 we also have psychic sword a card that we can equip to a psychic monster and it gains attack equal to the difference between our life points and then we've got a lot of cards that gain us life points so we don't die we've got our three half counter to meet the requirement for our flavor of the week alongside final psychic ogre and scrap archfiend and then flamvel or Quizus. this card is here because the yang zing monsters are just going to give us a lot of opportunities to deal piercing damage and i love to see some piercing damage uh supported by the banned cards pot of greed snatch steel mirror force rivalry of warlords raigeki and bottomless this deck may be even worse than the watt deck but I'm excited to try it out because, I don't know, I'm doing weird things today. Let's get into the duels. I'm taking a gamble on this one, but I did ask chat 
to cheat with their psychic powers of their own and tell me what the result of this will be. Only 45% of the vote, says Borger W, and 55% says Borger L. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe we can change the future. Maybe predictions aren't set in stone. Let's see what we can do. Let the games begin. All right, starting off with a dub in rock, paper, scissors. We're going to open up with a Yang Zing Prana. This card doesn't actually do that much for the opponent. They are going to add the Yang Zing hand, or the Reptilian Hand Trap. I didn't know that card could add two cards. They can really give any support they want to a deck like this. They're going to go into Reptilian Hydra. Reptilian Hydra doesn't do anything. Okay, they've got a 2100 attack point monster. There's Psy Station. We're going to set a monster. That's not ideal because Psy Station does need the monster to be face up to resolve they're going to attack in with hydra and that is a hot mirror force get wrecked buddy they're going to summon the chi wen in defense position they are going to then hit the chi wen to summon the reptilian hydra chi wen oh wow this deck does some shit don't it we're going to draw for turn there's the pot of greed we love to see the band card but ooh, we do not love to see a set monster they're going to go to battle phase they'll attack into the psychic shocker we will hit them with the telepathic power but unfortunately the way the telepathic power works it does not block a yang zing monster effect they're going to go for the yang zing path they're going to draw two they're going to use the reptilian recoil they're going to summon back the kawaddle they're going to use the yang zing monster to summon a is that nirvana high paladin out of the deck i'm not sure we have a single out to this other than our telepathic power this is an extremely strong field our opponent has put together let's see what we can do with it psychic snail is a great start we're going to take 500 we're going to give that psychic snail an extra 300 widespread ruin we have been widespread ruined but fortunately we have a fuck ton of life points to chew through they're going to attack for zero attack for 16 attack for 19 and attack for 33 now a psychic sword would do us a lot of good here it can go up to a 2000 boost we're going to normal some panda borg we're going to increase panda borg's attack by 300 we're going to attack into the swanee we do not apparently have the psychic sword however we do have a panda borg on the field with a face down background that does mean that we have a little bit of protection for the turn. There's the Reptilian Vasky. Unfortunately, Vasky can take out the Pandaborg. They're going to go into a Synchro Summon, and that's just the end of the game immediately. Oof. Oof. This deck is strong. Perhaps I should have taken it a little bit more seriously. Let's go to game two. All right, I believe in Borgerbot. How can we open? Normal Summon Genetic Woman, set a card pass. This can be okay, especially with Rivalry of Warlords out. They're going to summon a Swanee. Swanee is not great for us because it's their most powerful Normal Summon that they have. But Rivalry of Warlords is going to do us a lot of good. There's the Raigaki. Okay, Swanee can summon out the Beyond. Beyond does have 1600 attack, but importantly is still a worm monster. There's the Reptilian Recoil. They're going to Normal Summon the Bishi. There's the Krebens. Unfortunately, the Krebens is in in defense position or is in face down defense position so we don't get its attack but panda borg has 17 1700 is a little bigger than 1600 there's the widespread ruin that's again not ideal it's so much removal in this deck there's another bishi uh that's another zero attack point monster and there's the beyond attacking directly this is okay because if we can get a size station plus a monster we're in pretty good shape 1600 isn't going to kill us immediately they can normal summon another guy but they summon themselves another dude there's the bottomless trap hole what a hit on the shaman of the tenyi we're going to pot of greed off the top but we're going to go to end phase unfortunately we did not have a monster to follow up lamia is going to normal summon it's going to add a vasky from deck to hand but vasky can't be summoned yet kawaddle's going to summon itself from hand we now have a king of the feral imps king of the feral imps can search out the reptilian naga but again they have used their normal summon here they're going to go to battle phase 2300 direct is not great we do need to see a normal summon we really need to see a normal summon to uh, damage equals reptile is bad for us Let's see if that there is a Pandaborg or a uh, a what's which of a what's it rivalry of warlords not doing us a lot of good right now because of the king of the feral imps. They're going to use Recoil. Recoil's going to summon back their uh, the, the one that isn't Kawaddle, a Lamia, and they're going to search out the... Oh, there goes the half counter. Half counter on a defense position monster. No! The... <laughs> The prideful roar problem strikes again, and oh, what a weird way to lose the match! What a weird way to lose the match! Oh, no! Ah, 
God, that was painful. The monsters getting set over and over and over again really put a damper on our ability to take out their monsters, and that just left us with nothing to work with. I want to see what a game three would have given us here. All right, there's the Reptilian Recoil. They're going to normal summon a pool out, but they can't do anything else because they don't have any monsters in Grave. We're going to go for Pot of Greed. We're drawing this basically every game, fat lot of good it's doing us. There's the Mystic Tomato in. Mystic Tomato is going to get us our Krebins in attack position, which is great because we really need the Krebins to be in attack position for any of this to work. There's the Lamia. Lamia is going to add Vasky to hand. They now have two monsters on the board, but neither of them is a tuner. That's okay when you have King of the Feral Imps. King of the Feral Imps doesn't do much, though, if it's bottomless trap hold. We'll draw for turn there's the genetic woman we're going to get in for a fair amount of damage here 1700 plus 1400 brings them down to 35 they're going to draw for turn what have they got they've got a set monster that's great for us although it could probably be a pretty a decent ass to yang zing but that doesn't really matter when you have a final psychic ogre in rotation we're going to attack in with the genetic woman over the beyond the beyond's going to summon swanee swanee is a little bit of a problem thanks to its ability to float which means that it's going to get over our genetic woman and then it's going to you know get them another monster they're going to recoil they're going to bring back lamia but lamia doesn't have any targets they didn't switch the swanee to attack position this is great for us there's the kinetic shocker we're going to attack in over the lamia we're going to attack in over the swanee swanee's going to summon the bishi and we're going to pass the turn we're going to Rivalry of Warlords. This is really strong because Bishi is dinky and so is Chi Wen. We're going to draw for turn. Can we get a little bit more attack point onto the board? We're going to go over the Bishi with the uh, Final Psychic Ogre. They're going to go into the Pulau and they're going to use the Chi Wen and we're going to attack into the Chi Wen, but that's 1700 damage of the Pulau. I wish that this had happened games one or two. That would have been great. We would have loved to have seen it, but unfortunately... <laughs> I did end up not taking this match seriously enough. This Reptiliang Zing deck is quite a threat. This is a hell of a deck. I don't even know that if I weren't messing around, this wouldn't have been a difficult time for us. But we're going to have to find out next week. Next week, we're opening another hidden arsenal to maybe make use of that Vajrayana that we pulled this week, and we're going to be moving on to Storm of Ragnarok. I'm hoping to see you there. Go forward in humble confidence, my friends.